I mean, what an honor, a return Look to the this. Cooligans. We could, we can't, we couldn't be apart for too long. This is how this is how you know. Last year we met him at, at MLS All Star, and I, I guess we had a budding friendship that we had to you know reignite. Right, yeah. and you know what? It's only fair. I mean, this gentleman, uh, first of all, one of the most exceptional players, okay, in the league. But also, will not stop texting us. When are we? When am I going to be back on your show? So the day is today, ladies and gentlemen. The star of LAFC, the one, the only, Carlitos Vela, everybody. Carlos, what's up, man? What's up? What's up? How are you guys? We're finally here. Finally back. <laughs> I know you've been missing us. Uh... <laughs> you get my text, right? <laughs> yes, the feeling is mutual. Happy to have you on the show. I, I I just love that people now think we have Carlos Vela's number, which is yeah. really great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we do not. There's no way we have to communicate with people who communicate with people who communicate with people who communicate with Carlos. That's several, how it works. <laughs> several layers. It's like Inception, actually. Yeah. Uh, okay, Carlos. Uh, I, I, uh, I honored, obviously, to talk to you again. Um, Leagues Cup is coming up, and this is uh, an exciting time, not only for Major League Soccer, uh, for Liga MX, uh, but also just uh, to have this new tournament. I know you are a person who have, you know, you obviously, uh, 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 you know, Champions League, CONCACAF Champions League. You're obviously used to playing against a lot of uh, Liga MX clubs. Now in this kind of tournament, what's the mindset uh, like? Uh, how do you guys want to showcase yourself for such a big tournament like this? Well, I mean, I think everybody's really excited because it's a new tournament. Nobody knows exactly how it will work. So always you are a little bit concerned about where, where we will play against who. So I think a lot of good things will come for sure. But, you know, when you play a tournament is new, always it's cool to say we are the first team to win that tournament. So I think that is the most excitement we have right now. And of course, we are ready. We are ready to fight. Of course, we are ready to to make a good show for the fans and create a good league. I think it's the most important part. Now, I remember when you first came into the league. I'm, I'm a big Arsenal fan, so I remember your time at Arsenal. I remember you at La Liga. You came into this league. I remember there being a moment that was shared uh, with, the, with all the fans where your coach at the time, Bob Bradley, said, I want you to be the Lionel Messi of LAFC. Well, now Lionel Messi wants to be the Carlos Vela of Inter Miami. Okay. Uh, and the rumor is, the rumor is that this will be his first competition. Well, I know you haven't played in this competition, but just playing against Liga Amaki's clubs, you've been successful in the past doing that CONCACAF Champions League. What advice would you give to Messi about playing against Liga Amaki's clubs? Well, I think that question no has an answer because what I can say to Messi, who can say something to Messi? That's the question. <laughs> Like, I think he just have to do what he's doing in the 20 years ago, past right. years playing. <laughs> so he's the best player in this sport. So for sure, he will enjoy to be here. He will make a great things for, for Miami, for the league. But of course, we are still the champion. So it's the only thing I can say. I'm, I have more titles than Messi in the MLS. <laughs> And you got to remind him. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think that's good advice for life. If you don't know what you're doing, if something maybe worries you, just think to yourself, hey, be messy. And at the end of the day, I think you'll be OK. I just love the yeah, idea because uh, a lot of time people think of, especially in Argentina, uh, people think of Messi as a god. So it's like almost what advice are you going to give to God? You know what I mean? I'm sure he's all set. <laughs> Of course, everybody, everybody knows that, like <laughs> yes. he can do whatever he want and he will be good. Right. I mean, as far as uh, his impact on on the league, I mean, you know, um, there there are few times in in American soccer where we have these just absolute meteors of people that can change the the outlook and the landscape of what the sport even looks like. You know, we had it with, with David Beckham and now having it with, with Messi. What's the what's the locker room conversations like about this guy? Is it is it basically like a rising tide lifts all boats? Like, all right, Messi's coming here. I'm sure all of our wages are going to be going up, right? Because MLS is going to be doing well. <laughs> or is it like, man, I really want to play against this guy and really kind of I, because I know the world is watching. Well, I mean, I think both. You have, I mean, we have a lot of players in the locker room, so you have a different <laughs> minds. Yeah, yeah. So some part we know, like Messi coming here will be a big impact for the league, for 
us because more people will will watch it. MLS, who beat Miami, who beat Messi, who win the champions. So, of course, you win in important in, in the world about MLS. But also, like, like you say, it's a cool idea to say, oh, every week if you beat Messi, will be around the world. So right. that is a little bit extra excitement to, to your motivation and, and play good. I mean, in the end, you have to do your best. And you have, if you want to beat Messi, you have to be better team because better player, of course, we cannot. But better team, we can do. What what advice does Steve Chirundolo give to you about playing in yet another knockout tournament like, uh, you know, League's Cup, especially coming in the middle of the season, which is different. A lot of times when you compete in Champions League, you have to do it at the beginning of the season. It's not easy, even though you've obviously proven uh, your guys can be successful at it. What about coming in the middle of a season like this? I mean, in the end, when you play knockout, you you can think about the next game. You have to win your game. You have to be 100% about that game. And after that, you can think to the next. If you start to think, oh, we can rest some guys for the next game, you will not pass the round. You have to be like, I put the best I have right now, and then we see tomorrow what happens. So in the end, you have to leave every single game as a final because it's like that. You have to win every single game if you want to be the champion. Right. And, you know, obviously last season uh, was incredible for LAFC. I mean, that MLS Cup final is literally one of the greatest games of football I think that we've ever seen as far as being a part of that game. I, I really we haven't got a chance to speak to you about this, but that we talk about this all the time. We talk about anybody who was at the game any whether it was a fan, whether it was a player. I'm like, what was it like for you? But obviously watching that game, I know you were you were subbed off a lot late in the game. So you obviously had to, to watch it. But what? Was that experience like in winning an MLS Cup in that fashion? I mean, it was crazy. Like you say, it was a crazy game. I, I think I, I touched all the feelings in the same game. <laughs> I was happy, sad, crying, smiling, <laughs> laughing. So everything in, in three minutes. So it was something like nobody expect, but is something cool like in the end i always say when you create a good show for the people you also enjoy that so i think that final was amazing and of course i say that because we win but right. <laughs> i don't think the philadelphia guys think the same like me but no <laughs> but for sure it's something like everybody remember because everybody enjoy of course when you are in you feel more more hard all the feelings but I think that day was like crazy for everybody. Everybody was really happy to pay a ticket to go yeah. and watch that game. I, I, or, I'm, I'm curious, yeah. what what was the, like, maybe you got a text from somebody that watched the game that were like, I can't believe, like, what was the craziest person that you didn't think would be watching that watch that you're like, I can't, I can't believe I'm hearing from them. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, when I, we win, I forget my phone. I don't <laughs> touch my phone. That really so, well, uh, three days. I don't touch their phone. Wow, as in nobody in the end. My family was there, my wife, my kids. The rest, like, okay, they can wait. Now okay, I have okay. to celebrate. So, somewhere there's just... I don't remember if I take somebody, I don't remember. <laughs> somewhere there's like a really important former player who's like, damn man, I guess Carlos Bella don't like me, he's not responding <laughs> to my text. <laughs> For sure, it was a lot of people saying that. Right, right. That's amazing. How does I mean, Carlos we, Vela celebrate? I was, I was just saying, we texted you and you, you responded to us. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You. you did get right back to us, which is really cool. Um, of course. That's How does so Carlos good. Vela celebrate? Let's say you win the uh, you win the League's Cup. How do you celebrate? Honestly, you will surprise because right now, this age with wife, kids, you can do the same thing. Like if I win with 20 years. Right. right so right. now if I tell you, you will say, what the... Boring guy. So <laughs> it's better to don't say nothing. Now you think something special in your head. Yeah, we're like, yo, he's at the club. Meanwhile, it's just him taking a nap. <laughs> sure. Like I was after dinner, I was like, oh, I'm tired. I go to sleep. <laughs> Are you a nap guy? You like naps? No, I don't. I don't. I don't like no? it. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, just all business all day. <laughs> <laughs> just get punch in, punch out, bro. Okay, move.
I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, LAFC season this time around. And, uh, you know, it's uh, obviously a bummer given, obviously, the, the you know, El Trafico at the Rose Bowl didn't go the, uh, the, the way you planned. But that was a, a, a remarkable game to have that many fans for an MLS match is like not something we're really used to seeing. Um, but for El Trafico starting to become a um, the marquee kind of matchup that kind of everyone in the United States is like sort of needs to watch uh, getting to be a part of that story. How, do, how is that feeling uh, nowadays, even though some of the, sometimes the results don't go your way? No, I know it was a great, a great game. I think it was way better than I expect because in the end, when you go to different stadium, big stadium, you, you don't know exactly how the fan will respond. But what's coming back, the stadium was full. Half of the stadium was white, the other was black. So yeah. a lot of craziness about that game. Of course, the game also was a good game with emotions, goals. In the end, we couldn't draw in the last minute. So it was a really good, a, a really good game. I think a lot of people enjoy enjoy the game. And for sure, it's like a point mark to say, oh, we can make that market bigger and bigger. So yeah, yeah. I think the league is it's getting, like I always say, it's getting better. So when you get better like that and you think, oh, this is too good, how we can do better? And you find a way to do it. It's something like, oh, this is special. So you have to keep working on that. And in the end, like I say, to to create that expectation, you have to make a good game. You have to do a good show for the fans. So yeah. I think it's the most important thing. Every game against Galaxy, we always have a, a lot of goals, emotion, like good goal, good play. So the people is expecting that. So we don't have to lose that to to keep going and keep growing as a as a derby. Yeah, I'm I'm I love the it's on the field, off the field. I mean, we had the Chiellini, Ricky Puj, Payaso thing, and and I I love the <laughs> it's a little novela. It's always, it's always, something happens. Always something happens. I want to ask about um, and, and we can make this the last question or if you uh, have one more question, but um, I want to ask the the rivalry, not just between LA Galaxy, but between some of the Liga Maggie's clubs. Recently, we heard Gignac, uh, a legend for Tigres over in Liga Maggie's, uh, say that he thought Ma the Mexican League was more proper football. And I'm paraphrasing, but that uh, MLS was more all marketing. Um, did that reach you guys? Does that inspire you guys when you play some of these Liga Maggie's clubs? No, honestly, I respect his opinion. Of course, I don't think the same, but but it's 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 just like other guy talking about his things or how he see the league. But for us, the important thing is like when we play in tournament, do a good job, play good, beat Mexican teams, and of course fight for for titles. In the end, it's the most important. When you win something you can prove you are doing well. If you start to lose and semifinal, finals is all Mexican team, for sure they will say they are better league. So you have to prove in, in this tournament or every tournament you play against other leagues to show how good you are as a league. I think it's the most important and for sure will be a good test for, for both leagues to show where we are. Yeah, I wow. mean, see, I, I, Carlos is a chill guy, like just like Coors Light, super chill. <laughs> the best way this is to is helping me. Yeah, <laughs> it's relaxing you. I wonder if the, just the uh, uh, this is my last question. The, the the banter is there a lot of banter between you and when you play against a Liga MX club? Obviously, being being a Mexican player and obviously uh, an important player in Mexico as well. Uh, do they? I mean, given like Gignac, uh, his comments. Do the, you do you hear the same things on the pitch? Like, oh, you know, uh, you're just playing for MLS. You're not. You're not really playing where you. You know, is it? Is there really a lot of trash talking about even what league you play in when you when you are playing against a Liga MX club? No, honestly, when you are in, of course, you can talk bad things about anybody, but not about the league. It's more about against who you are playing or right. something like. <laughs> You can get him out of the game. I think it's like <laughs> the same thing happened here when you play against other MLS team or when it's a Mexican team. The most important is like when you play there, all the fans are like trying to be against me. Even I'm Mexican, always I'm the target for 
all the fans in Mexico, but it's something, it's part of the game, it's part of uh, what we are doing there, or when they come here, we, we will do the same. You have to be prepared for that kind of thing. You have to be mentally strong to get up on all that things and just focus in, in, in do your job and your, do what you do best. Amazing. That's good advice, too. Thank you so much for, for being on our show, man. Uh, uh, no yeah, uh, Carlos, take care. Best of luck. Cuídese. Uh, best of luck in, uh, yeah. in Take care. Car. And stop texting me, please. <laughs>